Hi, I'm an Australian guy living here in beautiful Belarus and today I want to talk about a problem in Belarus and I can broaden this out and I can say a problem in this part of the world because often Western guys that come here they kind of idealize the place a little bit well actually it's one of two things they either love it or hate it the haters leave pretty quick uh, the people who love it stick around and enjoy it for what it is but there are some problems here and I'm gonna go through one problem and it's not just here in Belarus it's also in neighboring Slavic countries Russia uh, Ukraine uh, probably Moldova at a guess I I'm not sure but probably and this problem I'm going to talk about today is about the banking system so of course what is a bank a bank is somewhere where us people can deposit our savings we get paid some interest and then the bank lends the money out to somebody else at a slightly higher interest rate and they keep the difference right this is how it usually works. Now in the West, we're used to this working, yeah? Put the money in, okay, you're gonna get 0% most of the time, or it's going up at the moment, but for years it was 0%. And then you can borrow it for really cheap as well. And the bank keeps their whatever. Depends the product, anywhere from two to 10% maybe profit. Now here uh, in the Slavic world, in this kind of Northern Slavic world, it doesn't work that way, yeah? People here do not trust the banks, right? They do not trust the banks. Most people here do not want to deposit money into a bank. So this is a problem for a number of reasons. Uh, one is, well, what do they do with the money? Well, typically, you know, trying to store wealth, that's the idea of a bank. I'm walking past the bank right now. Sperv Bank. So what happens, they don't want to put the money in there. So if they have a lot of money, well, usually they'll buy apartments. And apartments are this kind of almost like gold and they just store wealth in this part of the world now if you can't afford an apartment or you can't afford the one you want or the ones you want you might have to uh, store the money at home and often people have safes and they store the money at home now of course there is two currencies here right you go to the, the bank of Mart, the ATM and you can take out rubles Belarusian rubles or you can take out US dollars and of course the accounts here as well, you can open up a US dollar account or you can open up uh, a Belarusian ruble account. So people in this part of the world are very skeptical about their own currencies and they typically don't really want to hold their own domestic currencies. What's interesting are the interest rates available. So if you want to put in some Belarusian rubles in here in a deposit account, you'll earn about 18%. Yeah, I'm not kidding you, 18%. So with compound interest, in less than four years, you'll double your money, right? So that's telling you that there's significant risks involved. Obviously you have inflation, it's quite high at the moment, but you also have risk of default, risk of devaluation. There's all these other things in there. So the 18% turns out isn't that uh, lucrative. What you can of course do is deposit US dollars in here. I think they even have Euro accounts as well. And before the recent uh, cycle of tightening, uh, monetary policy tightening in the US and globally for that matter. I know interest rates here are about 7%. So you can put your USA dollars in here and you can earn around 7% on those. It's probably gone up now in line with uh, global money markets. But what that 7% actually reflects is the risk. Yeah? If you put it into an American bank account, zero interest, put in here 7%, that 7% is reflecting the risk associated with depositing the money into the bank. Let's now flip it over. If you're a bank, again, your business is to take money from one side and then lend it out to the other and keep that little bit of a profit margin there. Now what happens when no one's depositing their money? We well, have very little money to lend out, right? And of course people wanna borrow money, but there's none to lend out. So what happens is there's extremely high interest rates. So if you wanna borrow money for say, uh, purchasing a property, for example, a, a nice apartment around here somewhere, you'll need to pay like 18, 20, 22% on that loan. And of course, if you're say lending even just $50,000, right? That's almost yeah, around $10,000 per year just on interest, right? Most people here don't earn $10,000 per year at all, let alone be able to pay off a loan of that size. So pretty much if you want to purchase a property here, you'll need cash, yeah? Because you can't really get a loan here. If you've got a really good income, you might be able to get like a bridging loan. Maybe you might buy a $100,000 apartment, you have 80K, you borrow 20. You know, if you're an IT worker or you have a really good job, 
maybe something uh, teaching English or something requiring fluent English, you might be able to afford this. But you definitely won't be borrowing, you know, 80,000, 100,000, 200,000. That's not going to happen. So this has a couple of effects on the uh, property market. Of course, if you can borrow money to buy a property, what happens? Well, if everyone can borrow money, we're all borrowing money to buy a property, the property prices go up a lot, right? Um, and of course, as interest rates drop, uh, you can borrow even more because uh, your repayments will go down. So you borrow even more and you bid the price up even more, right? So although a, a decent kind of apartment here in Minsk might cost maybe 70,000 for a pretty decent one bedroom, decent area, decent repair, uh, the reality is if you started having loans, you might find that that 70,000 turns into 150 or 200,000. So what the local people do, you better hope that you're from the same town um, that where you're living at the moment, right? If you've migrated from one town to another, you're in a bit of trouble because typically people here do rely on inheriting property. And because you do have fairly small families here, typically children can inherit their grandparents' apartments, right? And this can help a lot. But of course, a lot of grandparents don't live in Minsk. And a lot of people will migrate from smaller towns and villages into Minsk and they might inherit a little property out in no man's land that's worth about five thousand dollars right so if you can inherit that property man you're on easy street right it's easy here easy mode but if you don't things are tough you're gonna have to work uh, boyfriend girlfriend have to work together trying to save maybe live off one salary save the other one you have to borrow money like from friends and family and uh, I know a friend of mine uh, in her late 20s uh, saved around $25,000 which is no mean feat right that's two jobs and a couple of side hustles over many many years and the apartment she wanted was around 40 so she went to her babushka there's 5,000 from babushka uh, babushka went around the village getting thousand dollars from each of her friends to finance and now she's got to repay uh, her grandmother and her grandmother's friends over the coming years so you have this kind of uh, home financing system that can happen. I haven't heard this happening much, but I did hear of that specific instance. And here in Belarus, there's not really a functioning stock market. So uh, in a lot of Western countries, of course, if you have some spare money, you can chuck some into to some kind of whatever, SMP or ASX or whatever it is. Uh, here, there's, there isn't that option, but there is crypto. And I can see that crypto is quite popular. Now, of course, crypto has gone down a lot at least non-stable coins gone down a lot in the last 12 months, but uh, I can see a culture of young people here having more interest in crypto, and not just Bitcoin, Ethereum, whatever, but also the stable coins, storing money in uh, anonymous wallets. Uh, when I say money, I mean USDT, USDC, BUSD, these US dollar backed stable coins. And you can see that this is really helping them with their financial situations. Moral of the story is that not everything seems as rosy as it first might on uh, initial inspection. So certainly the banking system in this part of the world certainly operates a lot differently to how we might expect it to operate in the West. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any stories related to this topic, please drop them below in the comment section. I'd love to read them. If you are interested in this content, you may want to drop a like on this video. If you are a subscriber to this channel, I thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are not, Feel free to press the subscribe button and then every time I release a video like this one, you'll be one of the first people who get to see it. Got a little bit of B-roll footage coming out here, just going for a stroll through Minsk. And a beautiful autumn day crossing Prospect Nezavizimosti, which is of course the big central uh, road that goes through the heart of Minsk, north-south. Uh, to our right up here would be Oktoberskaya station, metro station at Victory Square, Dana Mall in that direction, uh, to the north and as we head to the south here we have Ploshka Lenina and uh, the Avtobos Centrali as well. <clears throat> so we'll just go to Ploshka Lenina, have a bit of a look around Ploshka Lenina and underneath Ploshka Lenina, so straight ahead here is where Ploshka Lenina is, so uh, Lenin Square and just to the left there you can get access to uh, the metro station Ploshka Lenina. So we'll walk up here, there's got a nice landscape, little garden thing, fountain, church. We can uh, check that out on a bit of a walk today. It's a bit loud on Prospect Nezavizimosti. I don't like to use a microphone, I like to have the kind of raw sounds 
Uh, I really like the raw sounds, but of course, uh, when you have that and there's a lot of cars around, it can become a little bit distracting. So, fortunately, I've got a quite a booming voice, so I can just turn up the volume, and uh, you guys can probably hear me okay. So here's uh, Ploska and Nina here, and underneath this is a uh, like an old, well, they call it Soviet style. Again, there's kind of a you know, the younger generation kind of making fun. But underneath here, there's a, I forget the name of it now, but it's a, a three level uh, uh, kind of Belarusian uh, shopping center under here. So it's great for the winter time. Let's just slow this down, have a squeeze. It's a very European feel down here, isn't it? It's a nice square with these typical European style buildings. I see a head on that building. Let's go have a look and see who it is. Probably some Soviet dude. So you can see these are uh, all these window uh, glass kind of roofs here. These are giving light to the, uh, the shopping center underneath, right? few statues here. I'm actually going to do a couple of mince tours before I go. I'm going to uh, create a tour and uh, walk around and kind of be a tour guide is my plan. It's obviously a, a Christian uh, thing going on here. <coughs> Very familiar as I've learned to see, you have the two towers on the cathedral. That's pretty simple Russian before you read that yourself. whose head this was sticking up in the building here. P.P. Sharma. This guy is. So he lived here, this guy, is what that says. There's a pretty sizable church up here on the right-hand side, which gets quite a crowd on a Sunday. I was here one Sunday evening, I don't know, a month or so ago, a nice balmy summer's eve, and uh, I was quite surprised at the turnout, actually. Quite an impressive turnout at the church here. See those two crosses there on the furthest distance from the camera. That seems to be what the statue was that we just looked at. to the church. So this is the uh, shopping centre here as well, one entrance to it. So it's called uh, Stelitsa, if you can't read it. Stelitsa, let's go down and have a quick look. Actually, let's go to the fountain first. I'm pretty sure there's multiple entrances to this shopping centre. I used to go to the gym here, so I'm kind of familiar with it. I don't get down this way too often. It's kind of not much down here. I mean, there's a, all the transport hub 
down the road there, but kind of don't stop here on the way, you know. taking photos of each other. Very normal thing to see here in Belarus. Alright, let's, uh, I'll do a bit of a zoom here and I'll go down and just show you the shopping centre here. It's a slightly older build. They have uh, Galleria and Dana Mall here in Minsk, probably the two newest. They also have Green City out west. But I think uh, Galleria and Dana Mall are probably the two best known for the moment, they're always building new ones, they're always expanding Minsk as the rural population slowly migrates to the city, as is the pattern in every country in the world. Uh, they're ever expanding the boundaries of Minsk, building of course with the new residential towers, they must be building shopping centres and shops and so forth uh, as well. Swaft cigarette smoke for some reason. And this is a very Belarusian shopping centre. Hot fix with oh, the 2.6 ruble coffees, that's around one US dollar. So there's some if you're not familiar with Belarus, um, women's beauty is really pedestalized here. It's taken very seriously and you need to respect this concept. So what you see is a lot of perfume, of course. But probably most of all what you see there is a lot of lingerie shops. Like, there's so many lingerie shops. I, I don't know what proportion of shops are lingerie shops. It's probably like 3%, 4%, 5%, something like this. So here's, uh, look how big this one is. It's humongous. Massive lingerie shop there. So as I say, women's beauty is taken very, very seriously here. It's uh, not something to joke about. Let's go for a bit of a stroll down here, see what's going on. Some nice little handbags there, chocolates, all oh, these are uh, really well known, classic Belarusian. Uh, the Zephyr, I don't know why I've actually eaten these myself. These are classic, can't tell what I'm looking at that one there. Um, this is like a classic traditional Belarusian. Sweet, let's go over here. This one here. Gift from Belarus. Oh, where is the focus? So it's 6.10 rubles, so 150 grams, it's around $2.40. Some other, some celebration, it says 150 years. There, I'm saying, I'm suggesting it's the company's 150 years old. These are all really classic Belarusian stuff. This is really, really classic. Uh, everyone knows and loves. And this looks like, oh no, it's a competitor. So there's three levels. You can see down there. Down there. It doesn't know which level to focus on. A bit quiet, it's a Wednesday. Another time, maybe around three o'clock. So yeah, not a huge crowd around, but uh, enough to keep things ticking over. You see there the uh, national picture of the National Library and the flag there that says "My Country." It's quite a controversial building, the old uh, National Library. I've actually been there, I did a video there by the way, There's a, you can look out from level 23. When I started this channel I was mainly pitching it just to the Belarusians to give them a sense of what a foreigner thinks about their channel and giving them some connection to the outside world. 
um, but then it's kind of morphed more into an expats channel just because that's who watches it. So I've kind of changed the content a bit so you can see where we were outside there. Just out there then obviously. And then this is the uh, this is the famous library, the National Library. And you can't see it, but behind there is a is a uh, a tower, and you go up to level I think level 23 or level 26, whatever it was, and you can look out across Minsk. It's really interesting. If you do come here, I recommend you go up there. It's maybe it's five rubles or something, uh, and you can see Minsk from every angle, and you can see the the variety uh, of architecture throughout the city and I think it's quite interesting way to spend half an hour going up there having a look uh, at the different generations of buildings all right so what I'll do is I'll cross under so if you go this way we're going under Prospect Nezavizimosti and we'll pop up on the east side so we were on the west side of Prospect Nezavizimosti it's quite a, uh, a mouthful <clears throat> traffic jam here. I have to wait. I'm a man. I've got to wait for the girls to go through first. This is the rules of Belarus. Mm, I can smell that shawarma. Oh yeah. It smells crisp. A bit of uh, shawarma action in there. Shawarma is like your... It, it's... Probably the most common cheap food that you can get that's easy with a bit of protein. It's not too bad for you. Um, so I actually find I eat quite a bit of shawarma. Probably a couple of weeks actually. It's just easy, tasty, fast. If you're in a hurry, you want some takeaway, but you're not going to eat out. You don't want to sit around with a mate or something. You know, you just want to get the food. Shawarma is a good option. So I'm coming up here, so there we've just passed Prospect Nazavizimosti. And we come up the east side, there's another couple of universities here, as well as a little park that will lead back up into Mark Street, which is the uh, kind of trendy cafe district. Is Mark Street, Karl Marx Street, no less. Karl Marx Street. Let's take you for a bit of a stroll down here. Maybe get to the university and I might say Das Vidanya to you for today. I hope you're enjoying these longer format videos. I I feel like there's no point making a video just me strolling around speaking shit. Um, this is not going to be popular enough, but I kind of like putting them at the end of other videos. So I'll give you some punchlines for five minutes, ten minutes. And then uh, if you're kind of in the mood, then we can just go for a walk. I quite like the format. So I'll do a few more like this. I won't do them every video, obviously, because... Although at the moment I'm spending most of my days, most of my, you know, so-called work time playing around with this channel, so I've got the time at some level. So there's a university up here on the left. I think it's a... Actually, it might even be linguistic as well, I think. This says, uh... The Rushni University. I actually don't know what this word is. That's a bit embarrassing. Belarus something university. There's a couple here, there's one here. Well, they're the same one but different campuses. And across the other side there, another university. And uh, I suggest there might be some dorms in there actually. But looks at those buildings. Could be wrong. A lot of these are uh, electricity stations here for cars. They're around everywhere throughout Minsk, at least anyway. All right, that's enough for today. Hope you've enjoyed the walk today. I uh, will leave you be. If you liked the video, you enjoyed my effort walking around, do click like. Uh, it does help my videos a lot. And uh, if you're subscribed, I do thank you. If you're not subscribed, now's a good time. Hit that red button, click the bell there, and every time I release a new video, uh, you'll be the first to know about it.